All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a replay review of a game that I played against First Killer and AJ with Pro Player Gyro on my team. I'm going to be talking about what I learned from the replay as well as what you can as well and apply in your own gameplay. So let's get right into it. All right, so to start out with, we're going to do my POV from, you know, just for a little bit until I see something that I want to point out. Right here, obviously, first mistake, I just missed the boost. Uh, you don't really want to do that. And when you're playing against players like AJ, they're going to pinch it into your net and you're not going to be able to save it. Granted, whatever rank you're at, you might not be playing people like AJ, but this was just the first mistake to start the game, which wasn't really the best, but we'll just write that off. It's no big deal, right? So starting off, I want to take a note of the kickoff real quick so look at how players are cheating for the ball see first killers there gyros there now how close you cheat i mean first killer is a little bit closer than gyro but they're both at pretty much the exact same spot it kind of like see first killer cheated a little bit too close here uh and then you know he has to actually retreat because the ball got popped over him now if you trust that your teammate is going to kill the ball and the ball is going to end up like right here after a 50 then yeah having this closer cheat would be good but luckily for us because i won the kickoff ball went over first killer gyro is able to uh he's able to get a possession on this okay now he tries to shoot it on, can't quite get it. First killer jumps because in this situation too, I want to note why first killer jumps. So the balls goes over his head. He sees Gyro doing that. He thinks, all right, Gyro's probably going to be able to follow this up. So he just jumped. I don't know, maybe just to scare Gyro, maybe to make him get off the ball. But either way, he couldn't get it. So then it's on me. I come up here, follow it up. And now I noticed that first killer's on the back wall i know that first killer has no boost but granted anything i put over aj first killer's still gonna have because of where he's positioned and notice who's challenging me here right so i know this is only the first 10 seconds or we're about two minutes into the video but this all is really important aj is challenging the ball forcing it high right because i know that if if i force it high uh and first killer takes it he's just gonna be able to take it into a dribble they're gonna get possession and he's gonna just take it out that way probably just get the full boost and then they're gonna have a counter attack However, by taking the 50 here, right? Granted, it was it was kind of a bad 50, but I took the 50 and now first killer can't follow that up because he has zero boost. AJ can't follow that up because he's in midair, give, which gives Gyro a free shot. Gyro goes for the flip reset. First killer gets the clear. You know, that works. Right here too, I, I'm not sure why this really worked, but I think first killer expected AJ to get a little bit of better of a 50. But because AJ hit the ball into me and I popped it up, um, I was able to just, you know, first killer was already upfield. I was able to just get a free shot on that. All right. Again, with the kickoffs, I like to really soft cheat. Um, you notice AJ is just a little bit closer than I am, but I'm a big fan of soft cheating. Uh, and in situations like this, it allows me to react a little bit better. Uh, I think if AJ had a little bit faster of a reaction time, he probably could have beaten me to the ball, but because he didn't, you know, notice I take a controlled first touch and not just banging the ball away to their corner or something. Take a controlled first touch, get it up the wall, go for an air dribble play. Again, once you notice the player challenging you here, so as soon as I see him dive off the wall here, I already know that I'm not going to be able to get the ball over him. Uh, and even if I were to get the ball over him, AJ is on the back wall, so it's not really going to matter. So I'm just trying to position myself to take a good 50 there. And Gyro's able to beat AJ because AJ was on the back wall, so that's a good jump from him. Also, you know, why not make a note of Gyro's positioning here as well? He's positioning for anywhere where this 50 goes. He's a little bit trying to predict it by turning his car to the left there. Uh, he was predicting it going the other way, but when it 50 out here, he was still able to react to it on time. No matter what happens there, Gyro's going to be able to react to it, and he's going to be able to jump. So, that was really good positioning. Alright, just try to get back here. You know, get some full boost. And notice how I'm holding on to my boost during this replay. This is something that I think First Killer does really well as far as uh, boost conservation and management. And this is actually why I get scored on right here. So, let's let's watch from his perspective for a second. He has zero boost... Goes for the flick, can't quite get it, grabs a pad, grabs another pad, and gets that full boost, right? Watch, he has 97 boost. Alright, a lot of people would, you know, use some boost here and there. 
he doesn't use boost until he's challenging the ball, which allows him to have enough boost to go up here, get a flip reset over me. Goes for the double, but he couldn't quite get it. He didn't have that much boost. And then AJ's just able to get a goal. And from my perspective, I mean, the only thing I could have done here was uh, challenge the ball differently. So either right here, I should wait on the goal line or go like on the backboard um, and wait for the flip reset. But if I do that, he's most likely just gonna fake the ball and just let AJ uh, come take it because AJ is really close as well. So it's kind of just a, an unwinnable situation, especially when you're up against players like First Killer and AJ. Uh, but you know, it happens. It, it is what it is. First Killer just made a really nice play to continue that 50 up with full boost. Right here, you're kind of just in operation uh, recover. Right here, I, I could have, um, I would say I knew first killer was in the back corner because if you if you look right here, you can see first killer's car turn there. And then if you listen, you can hear him flip behind us. So I knew that first killer was in the corner, which meant right here, I knew he wasn't gonna be taking a shot or anything like that. So I was trying to flick it across. However, I got a really weak touch and somehow I just dove in and, and saved the ball. Um, not really sure how that worked out, but it did. So I'm not going to complain about it. And then Gyro, I want to point out this as well. You know, this is another really nice play. Keep in mind, these are all top tier professional players, um, which is why these plays are being made. But, you know, I get the save, ball pops up. Gyro doesn't panic. He waits for his time to, you know, get on the ball and then makes the aerial flip reset, bumps for a skiller. I'm able to get the follow-up shot so very nice play from gyro there good bit of control now i want to watch first killer for a little bit um because i want to show you guys truly like this dude is, is genuinely one of the best players when it comes to boost management look he's not using any boost at all until it actually comes time to get the ball he was on 100 boost for probably 10 15 seconds there without even use needing to use any boost at all um and just just look at like how he's positioning and, and once he gets momentum he tends to not really lose it all right he knows so right there too he a lot of players would be tempted to go for that back boost but first killer sees that gyro is also heading in that direction and he knows that gyro can beat him to that no matter what so it's really smart of him to just go for the ball rather than going for the boost but the pinch doesn't get a lot of power so i'm able to get a touch on it uh my mistake here I see AJ going up well before I even hit the ball. So I could have done a lot of things here. I could have backflipped and then AJ would have just been floating like a, like a dummy. Or I could have banged the ball on goal, which also probably would have resulted in a goal if I had thought fast enough. However, I was so hyper-focused on the ball that I popped it up and AJ just gets a dunk. And Gyro doesn't have enough boost to get back to it in time. So I just kind of gave them that goal for free. It was a little bit unfortunate. Again, another kickoff. I want to emphasize to you guys, I think every single kickoff this game, people have cheated. Um, this is something that will help you. And yes, it might suck to learn at first because you might get scored on a lot of times if you're not cheating properly. But this is something that will help you 100% of the time. Hmm. Like, it, it, I won't say it'll help you 100% of the time, but cheating will get you goals more often than it gets you scored on, I would say. All right. Jarro gets the flip reset here, and notice how I'm holding on to my boost as well. You know, that's something I, I pointed out that first killer does extremely well, but I also make an attempt to, to do it well. Uh, I tried to go for the demo there on first killer, but he just kind of knew, uh, so he just stayed supersonic. And just made sure AJ couldn't get a shot. Nice. So, right there, the reason I didn't hit it out was because I know that if uh, if I hit it out there, unless I hit it to the left, uh, if I hit it to the left, basically I'm gonna get demoed, right? Um, if I hit it like over here, I'm gonna be flipping to the left and first killer's gonna demo me. If I hit it straight, I see AJ right there. So unless I get a boomer clear or a shot on net, AJ's gonna have possession. Even if I do get a shot on net, AJ's most likely gonna get possession. So I figured my best chance was to see if first killer would mess up and maybe hit it directly to the sidewall and then I would be able to follow up on it. But as is, uh, first killer hit it that way and kind of messed up his recovery a little bit. So I was able to just grab his boost. Uh, grabbing his boost there is important because if he gets that mid boost, he's able to turn right behind AJ and they would have two attackers on this play. Whereas with AJ and first killer all the way back, AJ is forced to give up the ball after he gets this touch here, right? He has 30 boost. He can't really do too much. And then gyro is going to have a free air dribble on it. So. 
Jarvo takes the air dribble. I'm just following up behind him, trying to get full boost. Also, another thing. As I'm going up the field here, you want to look look at the path my car takes, right? Get one boost pad, boost up, get another boost pad, drive over this boost pad, even though there wasn't boost there, drive over this boost pad, drive over that boost pad. So all of the time, I'm trying to get more and more boosts, okay? If you get more boosts, you're going to be able to be more impactful. You're going to be faster, obviously. Um, good turn from Gyro there. You know, we're in a 1v2 situation where First Killer has the play. Now, it, he can try to flick it over to AJ here, but it's going to be very tough for AJ to react to it. Um, and so Gyro just forces the ball by challenging. Uh, and then because Gyro knows that I'm full boost and he has none, even if the ball gets over him there, I'm behind him and I have full boost. So as long as he forces the ball to be out of First Killer's possession, it'll never result in the goal. Anyways, I hit the ball high, and Gyro's able to... This is another thing that pros do really, really well. So Gyro forces the ball, right? Rather than going all the way back with zero boost, he stays on the play, and he's able to score a goal because of it. You know, you can do a lot more work by staying in the play with zero boost than you can by going back most of the time. And now, right there, too, I want to notice, this is the first time that somebody didn't cheat up on the kickoff. And because of that, I knew that AJ was going to be trying to lose it back to first skiller. So whenever this happens, I always try to counter it by approaching the ball and trying to hit it like pushing it this way. Because if AJ comes along and side flips the ball, he's going to be contacting it about right here on the ball. So if I hit it right here, the ball stalls. And because first skiller is back, typically uh, the guy who's cheating on orange team will be able to win. So, Gyro is actually able to follow this up, but First Killer has a really, really quick reaction to it. Um, because he didn't go all the way back to the corner boost. He just soft cheated, basically, towards the back diagonal. Hit it to the side there. I figured Gyro would be able to go, but I think Gyro is going back for boost. And then right here, you know, just that's a little bit of game sense right there, knowing that First Killer is going to be going for the demo because he can't get the ball past me. Um, because AJ wasn't ready for the shot. Uh, so I knew that first killer was going to be going for the demo. Uh, and, and because of that, I just hit the brakes a little bit. Made him uh, miss me. Right here. Probably didn't need to jump there because first killer was all the way, all the way back there. Um, so I didn't need to jump at all. The only reason I would have was if AJ was going for it, but he clearly wasn't. So that's a little bit of a mistake by me there. Either way, I get flip reset just i don't know to see if i can maybe get an extra touch on it but i wasn't actually able to and then right here this is another mistake for me i went too far in net in this situation gyro's already covering the net so i don't need to get back post here especially because the only angle first killer can shoot the ball at net from gyro's covering entirely so i need to be watching the pass here and i shouldn't go that far in the net but first killer recognizes that um that he has to pass it but luckily gyro gets a good pre-jump and he's able to clear it out good save from me and recovered off the top of the goal and then open net chance here i can't remember if we scored this or not now first killer had an insane save look at the recovery from first killer gets bumped here zero boost he uses his camera to see where i am and he just double jumps it out that's so clean that's so clean. So now here, I'm just trying to get back. But as soon as I see Gyro has possession, I turn on the play. That should have been a goal. That was just a really bad shot, if we're being honest. Uh, but it was a good pass from Gyro. I just didn't score it. All right. First killer gets the flip reset. Easy save for Gyro. I mean, there's not really too much to worry there. Because, like I said, I'm forcing for Gyro. So by me jumping here, I'm jumping on the path of the ball. Uh, so if you, if you look, let me, let me see if I can put this in a fly view. Okay. So the ball is traveling down now, right? It's going down like here, right? So my only goal here is to go where the ball is about to be. If first killer doesn't touch it. So the idea of that is that if he gets the flip reset, the ball is going to keep on going down on the path. 
and the only way that that's dangerous is if he actually got the flip reset so by me going for where the ball is and forcing him to go high he has to get the flip reset not only that but he has to use the flip reset and if he uses the flip reset the ball is no longer dangerous right the ball is going towards our net sure but gyro's positioned right here he can drive to wherever the ball is going and he ends up just driving to it and uh, getting a touch out. So it's no big deal anymore. And first killer takes the ball back instead of just giving it away. That's something I see a lot of lower ranked players doing is, is they don't want to take the ball backwards because they feel like they're maybe losing progress or something. But Rocket League is a game where it's better to have the ball in your possession on your half than it is to have in their possession on their half. I guess that makes sense. I don't really know. Oh my god, yeah, I forgot about this. I almost scored a Psycho on first killer. Uh, this is... I was trying to pinch the ball and control it up the wall. But I mean... I'll take a Psycho, you know? Uh, almost. But first killer just had really quick reactions. This is it from his POV. Uh, you know, anybody else with any other amount of boost probably doesn't save this. But because it's first killer and because he had full boost... It was really no big deal. It was also one of the slowest psychos I've ever seen, which I'm kind of annoyed about. But anyways, going back to my POV. Uh, zero, or full boost here. And I don't know why I decided to challenge this the way I did. Um, I think first killer fake jumping really sold it for me that it was going to shoot. And I was kind of pooping my pants at this point. Uh, I was tied up in a game against first killer and AJ. This was a game that we were not supposed to win at all. Uh, so to even, you know, have it be tied is, is just crazy to me. And then AJ goes low, and I decide to jump off the ceiling for some reason because I wanted to go off the ceiling if AJ had touched it high. It would have made it a lot easier because if you have your flip when challenging the ball, you can react to a lot more stuff. So by going off of the ceiling, you keep your flip rather than just jumping off the ground. Uh, and you also have height and you're moving down. So it's, it's just a little bit easier to actually challenge the ball. So... You know, I jumped off the ceiling here, and I think Gyro didn't think I could reach this. Uh, which is fair, because I was off the ceiling. Uh, and Gyro would have had a touch there as well. So it wouldn't have really mattered either way. But now that I did touch the ball, I have to kind of follow it up and make sure that they can't do anything. So, grab the corner boost. First killer gets a touch up the wall, which goes a little bit away from him, and I'm able to just follow it up. And now AJ goes up for it. I'm just kind of chilling here. Took a powerful shot on net, but first killer was there i think it was probably crossbar but either way it's mostly just for pressure good bump attempt from gyro i noticed that aj's hitting the ball a little bit too far away from himself so i just sneak in and i don't think first killer saw me so aj hits the ball around first killer thinks okay it's in his possession and then i just sniped it yeah first killer he didn't see me until the very end there so that was very good from me to have the awareness that aj was giving it away but also, kind of unfortunate for first killer that, you know, my car didn't show up on his on his screen. Now, here, uh, with 10 seconds left, I was trying to just uh, control the ball. And I figured that AJ was going to be pre-jumping me. Um, so, either in this situation, when I see him pre-jumping, I, I can literally, from right here, I can just backflip and I'll land on the back wall. And it'll be a free possession play. But I tried to recover it and... Uh, because I tried to recover it, AJ was able to get a 1v1 play. I mean, this was kind of just disgusting. I'm not going to lie. Pre-jumps my touch. Goes extremely fast. Gets the double and gets the bump. So first killer is able to score it. Kind of unlucky, but, you know. Uh, it was a bad play for me to give away possession of the ball. I could have also, like, just one more alternative real quick. I don't want to harp on this, but I could have literally right here. Ball goes on my wall. I could have seen this. I could have seen that he was up the wall here. Granted, it's a little bit hard. So maybe if I had set my nameplate scales up a bit, uh, I'd be able to see him a little bit better. But, uh, you know, right here, if I see him up the wall, I can literally just turn around. So before I ever hit this ball, I can go right here. And instead of jumping off the wall for this, I can just turn around, go down the wall, and just shadow the ball and play the 50. You know, it's... It's something that might be a little bit uncomfortable for first-time people, especially if you don't know how to control your car on the wall, but that would have been a better alternative than what happened, you know? Next kickoff, I think we just stall the ball here. That yeah, first killer goes for that. Gyro's up. 
Oh yeah, go for a double tap, uh, but first killer's there, he gets the insane touch, and then they're not able to score, so we go into overtime. And again, I think with every single kickoff that's happened, there's been a cheat in some way, shape, or form. Even right there, you'll notice, uh, first killer cheated to the side a little bit, um, but I'm pretty sure he communicated it because AJ also tried to lose it to that side. So rather than hitting the kickoff straight on, AJ, um, see, he hit it with the side of his car to push it that way, uh, which is another kickoff strat that high level players will employ. Either way, I knew that right here, the reason I went for the full boost is because I knew that, you know, it wasn't super threatening. The ball went out so fast to the side that I knew that first killer wasn't going to be able to get a direct touch on it. So I knew I had a little bit of time at least to get some boost. And then first killer messed up his touch here. It was, it was very difficult. I think he tried to pinch it. Uh, yeah, he went for the, he went for the pinch, but he ended up messing up his touch. I noticed that AJ was left alone and a lot of people would probably jump here, but um i find that it works better to just go straight for their car and if you miss them slow down and try to just bump them because it's not really going to matter um if they're dead or not if they're bumped and they can't get back to the ball but anyways that's how i beat first killer and aj some key takeaways from this if you want them is manage your boost extremely well so try to stay on 100 after getting a big boost for as long as possible pick up a lot more pads um follow the play in a way especially for twos follow the play in a way where if the 50 goes bad you can still turn around or half flip and you'll be okay but you also want to be close enough to the ball that if your teammate gets a good 50 you'll be able to follow it up right away don't give away the ball too easily um obviously if you're in front of your net and somebody's challenging you're gonna probably want to bang the ball away or i mean if you're very confident in your 50s you can take a 50. um but you know in general Giving the ball away lets them have chances. It lets them, you know, get pressure. So I would highly recommend not doing it when you can. When you have enough boost to control it or dribble it or go for an air dribble or double touch or something like that. Like the more touches you get on the ball, the more you can influence where it goes and the less predictable you are, if that makes sense. Uh, score more goals than the other team. That's another one. And... You know, respect your opponents, but don't be scared of them, I would say. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this kind of video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.